Well, good morning, everybody. And as we start off today, let's begin with a map showing the last three days of total accumulated precipitation. A couple things I want to point out: that upper level low that's just been spinning here over the you know Lake Michigan and slowly trying to progress farther to the east. Well, we will finally start to clear some of this air out, but it's not been after. If you just take a look at some of these rainfall totals in here, some places in southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, and even into parts of Indiana saw between 3 and 10 inches of rainfall from this system. Now, a lot of the rainfall that you see here was really over um, you know, the end of the weekend and yesterday as storms kind of pulled over here into the east coast. But this whole region is going to clear out over the next several days here. We are going to be watching this cutoff low go into New England today, where we're going to see the risk of some severe storms possibly possibly in New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, this region right in through here. Meanwhile, across the western United States, a deep plume of moisture from um, the remnants of K still working its way through the Intermountain West. And we did see some rain that did get into parts of the Columbia Basin, although it was pretty uh, scattered and relatively light in this area. We still have the air quality issues early this morning. I mean, the sun was just rising here across the midsection of the country, but you can see uh, some of the smoke that still sits over this area. So our all hazards weather map continues to show a large area here that is going to be dealing with uh, poor air quality today. But the flood uh, watches that are, remain in place down here in parts of the Great Basin, Four Corner States, Nevada, uh, that's again because of this deep plume of moisture you can see it right here. But just take you back to sunset last night, there we can get a better view of where that smoke will push out into parts of the western plains today and all the cloud cover from that deep, uh, like I said, deep plume of moisture moving its way through the west initiating more showers and storms today. And once again, it's just kind of amazing to watch this cutoff low just slowly make its way east. It's now sitting early this morning, almost right on top of Lake Erie. And again, could be uh, what initiates a chance for some storms here today. But clearing out in a big way on the back side of it, that's going to be important to this upcoming forecast. Just want to reiterate, this is the area we're watching today for the best chance of some of those stronger storms, although throughout the Intermountain West, we could see storms as well. Big story I think we need to just cover is the jet stream pattern because through the middle and end of this week, we're going to be watching a sizable ridge open up here while deeper troughs come into the western United States. And by Friday, getting into Saturday, look at the depth of this trough here. Now, we always know that on the kind of the eastern side of the main trough axis, which is here, is where we get our best low pressure development. So we're going to expect to see um, this trough really initiate multiple storm systems that kind of come out of the western and northern plains and move here, uh, you know, toward Ontario or the Great Lakes as we go through the weekend. But the ridge out ahead of it is going to give expansive warm and dry conditions, but the trough coming through the west is going to bring in cooler weather and again the stormier weather out ahead of it. So just playing through early next week, we're going to watch this system come out here on the 19th and 20th, possibly being a pretty potent one about a week from today. After that, the pattern, um, we kind of lose some of the details as we normally do, but the ridge seems, seems to stay in place, excuse me, uh, as the trough kind of loses some of its, uh, uh, you know, depth. But the ridge that comes back into the west, I still see a relatively open jet stream pattern. There's higher momentum in the jet stream coming across the Pacific at times, which means I think things are going to continue to progress and not really get stuck or established in one way here over the next couple of weeks. But just to show you the next seven days of total accumulated precipitation, again, we can see the moisture in the Intermountain West. We can then see the first system that comes out here, the second one that follows it along the same trajectory, so the wettest conditions there, but a broad area missing out on a lot of this rainfall over the next several days. Very quick harvest progress should be happening in this area. I do want to show you what these systems look like on the high-res European model. So here's the first thing. Upper level low moves out by tomorrow morning. It's just out. We see the storms here by Wednesday afternoon and evening. And then by the time we get into Thursday, see the first wave coming out here? Okay, that's our first push of moisture. And then the second one follows here on Friday. And then here's the deeper wave, Saturday, Sunday. We're kind of playing fast here. But you can see how if I just rock back and forth, the flow is kind of doing this, okay? And that's what the main trajectory, I think, of these systems will be. The one I'm really going to watch carefully is right there at the 18th, 19th, and 20th, this one in this area. By that point, we have something to be keeping an eye on over here in the tropics as well. I included a tropical update in, the, in today's report, but just to show you, let's go to look real quick at the latest NHC five-day outlook. 
because they upgraded this morning with the 8 a.m. Um, uh, forecast up to 40% chance of this lead wave developing. And it could possibly come over the Bahamas and interact with the southeast. We're going to be talking about that a lot for the rest of this week. Anyways, if we come back to the near-term forecast uh, across the U.S., though, it will be cold enough for snow across the Rockies. Could pick up several inches here with snow. And as we get out there and look at what those temperatures are going to do, take a look. As that cooler air exits east, it's replaced by quite a bit of warm air in the midsection of the country that then spreads east by Thursday into Friday. So this pattern of temperatures really reflects, especially into the weekend, the deeper trough over the west. I mean, it was not six days ago that we were talking about 110 to 112 degree Fahrenheit weather here. We're now 40 degrees cooler than that in places while the heat comes back on in the central part of the United States. And that's where it's going to stay into early next week. One of the things I'm getting concerned about is we are at this point, you know, trying to get a winter wheat crop planted, but with the high temperatures coming in, the drier conditions, the evaporation rates could be two plus inches in this area, which is very high for this time of year, not the most ideal for, um, you know, wheat germination. But the temperature, or excuse me, I wanted to overlay that first of all before I talk about the rest of the temperature pattern with the latest soil moisture data. So we could see the values in through here really starting to drop off with those higher evaporation rates. That's what I wanted to point out. While this will continue to be eroded away with the heavier precipitation coming into the Dakotas and Minnesota uh, right here on the Red River Valley of the north. Now those temperatures. So if we walk through this five-day sliding window, you can really see the pattern opening up into that deeper trough west, broad ridge east. Temperatures could be, you know, 10 to 15 degrees above normal in this particular area. Uh, because of that, the risk of an early frost in the month of September keeps diminishing if you are east of the Rocky Mountains. Um, and we just don't seem to see a high enough amplitude pattern to really draw into some deep cold air before we get into the month of October. So uh, that's, a, that's a good signal overall. If you get a chance to read the report, I include um, a lot of content about the new long-range update from the European, which we also included in last night's in-depth video. And we also have a special section on the start of the South American monsoon. Models continue to predict above-average rainfall across much of like Mato Grosso and surrounding states all drier in far southern Brazil, Uruguay, and parts of Argentina. And just a reminder, Argentina is coming out of a pretty dry month heading into spring here, where some places, according to uh, the SPI data, that's a standard precipitation index, uh, suggests that it's some of the driest conditions for this point in August uh, into early September uh, on record. So this could be a very important clue as to the pace at which Argentina gets going with this next uh, growing season. Okay, we'll keep watching it. Talk to you again in the morning. Thanks.